Hi, you are so welcome to church today, wherever you are watching from or whenever you're watching in this mid-Christmas break holiday time. We're so excited to gather together and be refreshed together as we worship and get in the word. I wanted to share a scripture with you before we start. And I'm just reading from Luke um, 2. And it talks about when the angels came to the shepherds um, in the field to announce the birth of Jesus. And they said, glory to God in the highest realm of heaven, for there is peace and good hope given to the sons of men. And then when the choir of angels disappeared back to heaven and the shepherds said to one another, let's go, let's hurry and find this word that is born in Bethlehem and see for ourselves what the Lord has revealed to us. So they ran into the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was a baby there lying in a feeding trough. And upon seeing this miraculous sign, the shepherds recounted what had happened. And everyone who heard the shepherd's story was astonished by what they were told. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart and often pondered what they meant. And even as we joined together this morning for um, the word and for worship, I really believe that the Lord wants us to encounter him in a very fresh and special way. And the things that the Lord does for you in your encounter with him today, treasure those things in your heart in that special place of intimate connection with him.
great that we've been able to worship together and um, as I've just been thinking about the service this morning I've really felt that scripture that Jesus is the Prince of Peace who guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus and even as we come to the close of this year and our hearts get ready to step in to what God has for us next let's remember that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And I'm just gonna pray that for you today, that you would know the peace of God that passes understanding, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what you've had to face or journey through or walk through in the year that we've just had, that Jesus is your Prince of Peace. So let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you that you are our peace and Lord, just speak peace that passes understanding into every heart and every home right now, God, that your blanket of peace would cover people even as they rest in you before they get ready to step into a new year. We thank you, Jesus, that you are Prince of Peace. Right now, we're gonna take an opportunity to give back to God in our tithes and our offerings. It's part of our worship. And one of the things I always say to our students is, let's finish strong. And even as we come to the end of the year, I really want to encourage you to finish strong, whether you are new to faith and new to giving back to God what he's poured into your life. Maybe in the last Sunday of this year will be your first Sunday to start giving to God, but it's the best practice that you can do. And whether you've been giving for a long time, finish strong. I really want to encourage you in your giving today that together as a church, we would finish strong and step into a new season with great freedom. The ways to give are gonna kind of come up on the screen and you can follow them, but I really wanna pray God's blessing on you today in your giving. Giving to church is as easy as sending a text message. To get started, text the word GIVE to 744 69 92406. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email receipt. Made a mistake? No problem. Just text refund in a reply. You can also give from our church website by going to www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash give. Or finally, you can give from our church app. Find this at www.gpastures.co.uk forward slash app. I believe that 2021 is going to be a year of opportunity. We have faced so many different things in the season that we've just walked through, but I really want to encourage many of you that what the enemy has wanted to use for ill, God wants to turn it for good in your lives. Whether that's that you have now an opportunity to pursue a new job, new opportunities, new friendships, new partnerships, new relationships, new things. 2021, the year of opportunity. For some of you, that might even mean considering Green Pastures Leadership College. And if that's you, why don't you take a look at this? Hi, my name is Joanne. And I've started the Advanced Diploma in Ministry and I'm really enjoying my course here at Green Pastures Leadership College. And I'm thankful that I overcame the doubts and the fears that I had when applying uh, for this course and, and did that. For this season of my life, I decided it was time to invest in me and my relationship with God. I'm hungry to know more about him and I know that by doing so it will overflow into every area of my life. And so studying Kingdom Theology has certainly done this. The teaching and the teachers have been wonderful. It has challenged me, it has stretched me and grown me and expanded my thinking and beliefs. I've discovered more about God's plan for his creation and have been reminded of his heart and the vastness of his love 
for his people and how he always is for the lost, the oppressed and the broken. I've met some wonderful people already through college by taking part in the core classes in the mornings and the teaching classes. And I love that I have surrounded myself with people from all different walks, um, ages and backgrounds who just love Jesus and are inspiring me in so many different ways, encouraging me in my journey uh, to, and to use the gifts that God has placed within me. So I'm definitely where God wants me to be and I'm so incredibly thankful. Here I am. It's good to see you all here. I'm all dressed up in my ski jumper and I'm all ready to go, but I've no place to go because it's locked down again. And I was so prepared for going skiing down Slemish Alps and I was ready to party because it is the end of 2020. Anybody want to see the back end of 2020? Well, you know, the Queen had a really bad year one year and, and she called it Annus Horribilis. Uh, well, oh, by the way, did I ever tell you I got an E in my Latin? And it was a really hard paper that year, so that was a good mark. But, but for me, 2020, I have a lot of names that I could call it. But I'm a pastor, and so I won't. And, 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 because all kinds of people, lovely people, called me all sorts of things during that year, from son of dog to things that I can't even spell these days. And I don't know what 2020 was like for you, but God sent me to tell you two things today. Don't let other people name or call your 2020. Hmm? So before you call it, you may want to ask God what he would name it and what he would call it because he was doing some things in our lives. And so it may seem like Annas Horribilis, but God maybe had a different perspective on it. And that's why today I want to talk to you about before you call it. This has been a, a, this is an exceptional church uh, on an exceptional journey. And exceptional churches have exceptional storms. But I want to tell you that God is alive and he is working in your lives and he is working in your lives for the sake of others to console them in their grief and in their hardships because of the relationship that you have with him. Second Corinthians chapter 1 tells us that God is the God of all comfort. He's the God of all comfort. Where does the origin of comfort come from? It comes from our God. And what does he do? He comforts us. He comforts us in our time of trouble. Why? So that we can comfort others in their crushing moments with what we've experienced with Jesus. The comfort that we ourselves experienced from God, we are then to use that comfort to help others. And verse 5 says, the more suffering we have in Christ, the more we know uh, uh, what to experience and having experienced the comfort of Jesus. And then in verse 6, our affliction is for the consolation of others and for their salvation. Come on, we're going through some things in order to prepare our way to help others down the line. Because we know, we know, we know, having been through it, that our hope is, is firm and that it's steadfast and it's built and it's rooted in what we know of God. You see, what you know is what will get us through our crushing places and our sorrowful places. If you don't know right, if you don't know the right things about your God, when the storm comes, you're going to get washed away by the sinking sand. When great loss and tragedies befall us and they befall everybody at some point in your life and come our way, if you don't know right truths, right truths of this Bible and the God of this Bible, you will not stand. And so what was God doing in you in 2020? What would God name your 2020? Okay. Uh, you see, at crushing moments, what you know is what gets you through. 
And you say within yourself, in, in the shock and in the trauma and the horror of it all, how are we going to get through this? But you will get through it. And it will come to pass by the word you know from him. You see, a habit of a daily diet of knowing the word of, from the heart of God is what will get you through. We dare not build our lives on shifting sand and the thoughts of Auntie Edna and uh, Uncle Bertie there who lives in Valium and, <clears throat> and a good stiff drink to get him through the day. You know, we need to build our lives on the rock, which is Christ Jesus, and on the truths of the scriptures that f fill us with the knowledge of God and who he is, so that whenever we get hit and whenever we get knocked over and we're taken down to our very foundations and <clears throat> that we know that we're built on the rock. And so before we go setting and making a call on 2020, what was God doing in preparing you for 2021? For me, <clears throat> you see, because we, can, we cannot determine what confronts us in life. We can't determine that. It's, it, what's going to come is going to come. <clears throat> and for me, we can determine what follows us. You see, for me, what follows me is surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I need that as a foundation. I need that to make sure that that's the place that I'm going to call my future out of, a place of surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me. And so what I want to do today is I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 35 in your Bible. Genesis chapter 35. Uh, and we're going to read from verse 10 uh, through uh, 20. And God said to Jacob, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore. But Israel shall be your name. And so he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you and kings shall come from your body. Wow. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you and to your descendants after you. And I give this land. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And so Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with God, a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, <coughs> Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel. And when there was but a little distance to go to Ephpathra, Rachel labored in childbirth. And she had a hard labor. Now it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was as her soul was departing for Rachel died that she called his name Benoni. But his father, Israel, called him Benjamin. And so Rachel died and was buried on the way to Epathra, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this very day. And we'll finish at that today. Let's just pray for a second. Father, we, we come before you tonight, Lord, and in this day, as we prepare to go into a new year. Father, before we call 2020, Lord, help us to be renewed in our mind, to be focused on our best days are still ahead of us because we believe, Lord, that you're setting, up, setting us up for the future, Lord. And so thank you for your goodness and thank you for your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, Jacob has a call in his life, just like every single one of us, and it began with a mountaintop experience with God. He was at the end of himself and he lays his head on a stone. Why? That just tells you how comfortable it must have been for him. And so he lays his head on a stone and he looks up 
and he, the heavens, we're told, are opened up to him. <clears throat> and here we see a man in real trouble letting heaven make the call. God has a way of showing up to you when you and I are at the end of ourselves. And suddenly a ladder descends and angels start to ascend and descend. And, and he's saying, this place is the gateway to heaven. He says, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. You see, what every person needs, every person needs is such an encounter. And Jacob calls the place where he met and spake with God, Bethel, which means the house of God, the place he met and spoke with God. You see, church should be and is meant to be right here in Genesis, right here from the beginning, to be the center of your life's journey. And so Jacob is coming back to, with his family now and his wife to this very place where he first has his encounter with God. And now he's bringing his wife and his family with him to Bethel, to the place of God, to the church of God, to the house of God, and he brings his family to that place. The first time that he encounters that place, God gives him a vision. He sees angels and he sees the ladder from heaven. He sees Jesus as the ladder. And he, he takes him to the place and he has that vision. But now he's visiting again the second time. And the second time he is sent, he is sent on a mission. Okay? First he gets a vision, then he gets a mission. And that's how God works, <clears throat> to fulfill what God has put him in for to do in this world. And, and the great news is, he's not perfect. Boy, I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> ja Jacob is not perfect. He, he's got issues. But, but God calls him in spite of his stuff. That, that should come for all of us today. Because God said there were nations and kings in him. Twelve tribes of Israel would come out of him. And God says, get up and I want you to head to this place called Epaphra. And he starts on the journey of his calling. His life's purpose. He's going somewhere. 2020 is only a step in your journey and in my journey that God has prepared for us. Because you cannot walk with God and, and not get a vision. I tell you, brother, you can't walk with God and not get a vision and not get a mission. You see, a purpose for your talents and a purpose for the gifts that God has put into your uh, insides. And see, there are too many Christians today and you don't see where you're to go in life because you won't make the house of God your habit. But the entrance of God's word gives you light. <clears throat> the Bible talks about his word as a lamp onto your feet, a light to your path. But, but the reason you can't see today, brother, could it be because you're not reading by the lamp? You're not being directed by the lamp the lamplight of the word of God. Your knowledge and your vision is not in the word. You see, every person who has been with God, every person that's been with God has a journey to go on. <clears throat> You're headed somewhere. For Jacob, it was this place called Epaphra. It's, it's something that pulls you. Ah, I'm going to say that again. Yeah, God gives you a purpose and that purpose is going to pull you out of some things. Something that you need that's going to move you on when you get any places of difficulty and struggle and hardship. You see, every day I thank God that I have a place to go to because that's what separates lost men from found men. There is nothing as dangerous as a man or a husband without a vision, without a place that he's going, without a place that he's going to take his family to. 
<clears throat> and I want you to listen to this carefully. And this is absolutely wonderful. The Bible is so wonderful this morning. The word of God, this word epaphra, we see what it, we hear what it, epaphra means fruitful. Okay? So, so get this. So, so Jacob, God has sent Jacob on a journey to being fruitful. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, come on. You, you go, I see, the Bible is just absolutely wonderful. God has Jacob on a journey of, to being fruitful. And he wants to send you on the same journey, on a journey to being fruitful in this life. And so Jacob is on the journey to be fruitful. He's on the journey to what would later be called Bethlehem, the place of bread, the place of finding Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. Oh, my goodness, the, the Word of God is just phenomenal in so many different ways. You know, I, I, and Jacob is on this journey. He's a chosen man of God. <clears throat> and, and he's chosen. Do you understand? And, and he's not perfect, but he runs into a crushing place. He has a real crushing year. <clears throat> a real reset, a real shutdown, a real destruction of everything that he thought would, was of value and use. You see, many think that as a man of God, that shouldn't happen to you. you. They think everything should be good. But here we have a man of God, Jacob, who's now called Israel, been renamed Israel, going on a journey to being fruitful, and, and he, he hits a crushing place. Rachel, the love of his life, the woman that he worked 14 years just to be with her, just to have her, just to know her, is now pregnant. And, and it seems like it's all good and everything seems like it's going well. They're heading to Epaphra. They're, they're nearly there. They are nearly home. But something is still pulling Israel. Something is still pulling Jacob. He has something working in his life that's pulling him on. It's his mission. Sir, lady, young person, <clears throat> you need to be on a mission. I'll tell you, 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 if you don't get a moment with God and have that God moment, that's the thing that's going to pull you on in this life when you get to the place that Jacob is. And here we see Rachel and she's pregnant and she is now going to have her 12th, 12th baby and as they journey the Bible says in verse 16 it says this and when there was but a little distance to go when there was just a little distance to go to being fruitful to reaching their destination of Epaphra the Bible tells us Rachel, Rachel went into a hard labor and, and Rachel Rachel dies. Why is that crushing moment come <clears throat> when you're almost there? Well, what, why is it that it happens when we're almost there? Uh, uh, he, he's almost there and trouble comes on the journey <clears throat> to the, the call of God, to his destiny. And, and yet it will crush him and, and it will crush us when we're almost there. He hears Rachel screaming. She's dying. His love is dying as she's given birth to the plan and the purposes of God. But how can this be? How can this be God's chosen vessel? <clears throat> I thought only good things happen to people that are called of God. And, and, he, and Jacob hears her cries and, and, and he never thought he never thought when he started out on that journey, I never thought that getting to the place, to get into the place of fruitfulness, to the place of bread, would cost so much. That would cost him so much, so much that he cared for, so much that he loved. He never thought that the journey would hurt him so much. And yet, guess what? God is with Jacob. He never thought that he would have to bury something he loved along the way. And this was Rachel. This was Rachel. He loved her so much, and Jacob could have shouted, 
Lord, and I'm sure he did. Why, Lord? Why, why, why could you not have intervened? What you could, you, you're God. You could have stopped us. This isn't right, Lord. This wasn't the way it was supposed to be. I don't understand. We were nearly there, Lord. We, we were nearly there to fruitful. We could, we could see it. <clears throat> Rachel, so wanted to see the place. You know, it's many of us on the journey have been touched by loss and by grief, grief and pain. And if we don't know that God is good, if we don't have it in our hearts and weld it in there, that God is a good God and that all his thoughts towards us are for good. And if, you're, if our hope is not rooted in what we know, then we could be like Rachel, who cried out in, the, in her moment of birth and, and called the baby that she was about to have that was born there. We could call our day Benoni. We could call our year of 2020, Benoni, son of my sorrow. We could call it that. We could look back and go, this is the son of my sorrow. We could get caught up in the sorrow of the year and in the depression of the year and, and of the difficulties of the year. But if you know God, if you've had an encounter with God and know the truth of his word for people that love God and are called according to his purpose, we are comforted. We, we are comforted. Jacob could have let the sorrows of the year, of, the, of his life dictate his future, could dictate his 2021. It didn't seem fair. He could have said, curse God and die. Rachel calls it Benoni, son of my sorrow. But Jacob looks at it completely differently. See, Jacob knew the right things about God. And he was able to call the child of his trouble and in his sorrow, not after his sorrow, but, but Benjamin. He, he renames the place of his sorrow, Benjamin, which means the son of my strength. I'm going to call that place a son, the son of my strength, the son of my right hand. You see, Jacob was still seeing through the eyes of faith. And brothers and sisters, we've got to keep looking through the eyes of faith in all our circumstances. And in the midst of this crushing moment, in the midst of calling his 20, his 2020, he, he knew that all things work together. All things are not good, but all things, even the bad things, work together for good to those that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And what the Holy Spirit is tenderly saying to you and tenderly saying to me and to all of us today, that if we take our eyes off him, if we take our eyes off the mission, there is a tendency for us to birth things and call things that you could call the wrong thing. And you end up with birthing a son of my sorrow for all the rest of your days and for the rest of your life. And so before you call it, before you call it, it might be a good idea to start looking for the purpose of God and ask God what he would call what you've just went through. Many of you have been through crushing moments and something in you died along the way. <clears throat> Sorrow enveloped you. Depression swallowed you up. You gave up on your dreams your hopes died. You don't trust God anymore. You lost your vision and your mission. And you thought what happened could only bring you sorrow. But you know what? It was meant instead for strengthening your soul in God. He, here's the real dangerous thing about calling your year that's now past in your sorrow and calling it something there are some of our children have been named and are being formed by mummies who are still in their pain and still in their sorrow. <clears throat> Yet you loved them, but you named them in your pain. You named them out of your pain. And now those kids are stuck with what you called them in your pain. <laughs> but Jacob 
Come on, this is what I'm trying to tell you today. Jacob sees and Jacob believes. <clears throat> but Jacob believes God's destiny and heart for him. And he calls this wee boy, his wee son, that could have been called son of my sorrow. He calls him Benjamin, son of my strength. And after a year like what we've all had, there are some things that happen that make absolutely no sense. Yeah, no sense to me at all. We were so close to being fruitful, so close to home. But there comes a time in, in the crushing moments of life when we have to believe where we cannot prove. We have to believe where we cannot prove. And we have to accept what we cannot understand. <clears throat> Jacob set up a pillar on that place where, where he buried the person he loved. And it would always remind him that something good died on the way to home and to his place of destiny. But also at that place of sorrow, strength was born. Oh. Strength was born in the place of your greatest struggle. Oh my. And out of strength, come on, follow me here. Out of strength, strength was born in the place of struggle. And out of strength would come the twelfth child, the, the, the number of government, the twelfth tribe of Israel. And now a nation will come forth. But it cost Jacob everything to finish. But here's the thing. He didn't come there. He didn't come there. He didn't come beside the graveside. Yeah, he mourned. Yeah, he cried. Yeah, he loved us so much. Yes, he missed her, missed the empty chair, but he didn't come at the graveside. You know, there's a time for that. And there's a time, like what Jacob does, his, his destiny pulls him on. Come on, it's time to move on. We've come here long enough, says God. And, <clears throat> and so some people will have to allow some stinging things to die in you that can't go any further. Can't go any further with them. There's attitudes today that we all pick up that are going to have to die on the journey to being fruitful because there's no place for it where you're going. Crushing places. I tell you, crushing places take out of us the bits that can't go any further. And some of them we love. Some of them are flesh loves, selfishness, half-heartedness, sitting there lazing and lazing around and not ministering to anybody, not on any team, not on any life group, just sitting there being a, a dead, miserable, lukewarm old Christian. You're indifferent to the pain of others. Offend it. Rebellion, rebelling against leadership, unforgiveness, pride, position and status. <clears throat> and don't miss this. Don't miss this one here. Low self-worth. Carrying on that old victim spirit. Boy, you've been doing that for years. Hating life and all that sin that you love floating around. That habit that you won't let go of. All these things, all these things God is saying to you need to die on the way to being fruitful. Need to die on the journey of being fruitful. And church, we've got to understand that this is a miraculous church and a miraculous church will see miraculous things. But church, there is a city at stake depending on what decisions that we make by the end of this 2020 and looking into 2021. You see, Epaphrath later became known as the house of bread. <clears throat> It, it, it became known as the house of bread. And if you're going to make the finest of bread, you're going to have to need the finest of wheat. And that wheat must be crushed for it to make the finest of bread. And we're the wheat. We're the wheat. And we have to be crushed. And we have to be crushed if we're going to make the finest of bread. And the people will come from everywhere to smell the fresh bread that has been cooked in the oven of affliction. Oh, I remember going down, my, we used to walk, my ma used to, I used to walk, hold hands with my ma down the street and used to go past Leith Bakery. Leith Bakery is, is uh, Jill Leith's da and, and uh, 
Kathy's dad used to work in there too. And when we used to walk by, the smell of the fresh bread coming out of that place, you just, oh, and you just turned and went in there because people would be drawn to that smell. That smell of beautiful aroma of Jesus that ought to be in us and will only be in us when we have been crushed. It's, it's a fact. And I believe God has sent us up and sent this church up for his aroma. And he's sent me up for this aroma and he's sent you up to, for the thousands to come into this church, to come to where, <clears throat> because there's nowhere else that they can find comfort. This is a repair shop. This is a, a, a place of refuge. It's going to be a place of refuge because people are going to be coming out of this and coming out of this time and don't have any foundation. Everything has been shaken. Everything is gone. Their businesses have fallen. Everything is gone. Everything that they held there, everything that they felt was secure. And all of a sudden, it's not there no more and they're going to have to look for something and God has made you and I and is preparing you and I to be the fresh bread <clears throat> and so we must take on the mission we have to carry the mission we have to take hold of this mission we have to grab hold of it and understand that these crushing moments that we have been through are there to take us to the place of fruitfulness <clears throat> And I'm saying, and God is saying to some folks today who are stuck, stuck at that place, depressed, fed up with us here, don't know what else to do. God's trying to tell you today, it's time to move on. Leave that stuff behind. Leave them things that you won't, you've been, he has been talking to you for years on that stuff and he wants it to go. It has to go if you're going to get to fruitful. And then, when we've been through all this, then our hearts will be so overwhelmed to comfort others and to have the knowledge that God is good in the midst of not good. And we can share that with others. We can share that with our world. And we can do it because we have been where they sat and are sitting. And we can tell them how to get out of it. <clears throat> and we'll do that with Jesus by our side. And so before you call it, before you call 2020, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm looking to you today. I'm praying God... Please let them understand what you thought a 2020 was doing in their life. Because if you'll call it the right thing, if you'll call it the place of strength, do you know what? That sets you up for your future. That sets you up for your mission, your place of strength. That's the place where I got strength was in my trouble and in my difficulty and in my places of loss and in my places of crushing. And so here's the 2021. Here's the 2021. Here's to the place of fruitfulness, church. Here's to the place of breakthrough <clears throat> in your life. Here's to getting back on the journey to fruitfulness. Here's to your encounter with God today. Here's to your getting on the journey. Here's to your mission and your purpose and finding life again with the Lord Jesus. Here's to moving on in 2020. Here's to birthing Jesus <clears throat> as my strength. Here's to the aroma of Jesus in our church and through our church. And you know, if you're listening to me here today, if you're listening to me today, I want you to understand that Jacob got to a place and went to a place <clears throat> where, you know, he had to get to the end of himself. And you know, God will allow you to get to the end of yourself. And when you get to the end of yourself, you will lay down and, and call on God. And if you'll do that, do you know what? The Bible says, the heavens were opened up to him. The heavens were opened up to him. And some of you need the heavens opened up to you today. Some of you need to hear God speak to you in the midst of your mess and in your trial and in your no place. And, and if you'll rest and look up and ask God, he'll open the heavens to you. Are you ready to do that today? Ready to call 2021 or 2020 the place where you encountered God? Because I'll change your 2021. And so if that's you today, if you're, if you're that person that wants God in your life now, you've done with all your stuff, you've tried everything, and you know what? It's just left you flat and ugly and, and, and bare and everything. If this is you, then I'm going to pray a prayer where that's going to ask, that's going to open up the, the heavens to you, and Jesus is going to come down into your life and into your world. And, he, and he's longing and he's waiting for to get you on his mission and his purpose. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so let's pray this together. Father, I come to you. Repeat this after me. Father, I come to you in the lovely name of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I ask you, Lord, that you'll forgive me for my 
my sin, Lord. Forgive me, God, for my waywardness, for, for, for doing everything my own self, for my pride and my selfishness, God. Forgive me today, Lord. But Lord, thank you that even in my mess, God, you call me out of it. You call me to move on from here. And so I pray for the strength and the courage, God, today to go on a journey with you for the rest of my days. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You prayed that prayer. Why not indicate with one of them we icons, a wee thumbs up, and one of our pastors will get in touch with you. We'd love to pray with you and encourage you and strengthen you along the way. And so we look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, for listening to us today. I pray and I hope that you, before you call 2020, you go find out what God would call it <clears throat> because you could be calling it the wrong thing. Amen. God bless you. so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it Take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, and I am who you say I am. You cry.
giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won and i am who you say i am you crown me with confidence i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered What a fantastic word. We're so thankful for a life-giving, life-changing word of God. If you feel that you have um, need to respond to that word today, our pastors are online right now if you're watching at the 9 or the 11 service and also throughout the week if you want to email support at gpastors.co.uk and we always have pastors on call to support you if you've got things going on. We're really thankful to have been able to have this time together with you in the service today. We pray that you've been so blessed and please keep in touch with us through social media to see what's coming up in the life of church and as we get ready to go into a brand new year with so many opportunities and God has got great things in store, keep in touch.